Hey friends, it's Ruben with Hi-Fi MIDI. Thanks for tuning in for my lesson number four in my beginner piano lesson series. Um, I'm going to do a quick sound check because I've been having some issues with this free software. Uh, I'm still having internet issues, but here it goes. Here goes the test. Now, if you notice, I have a uh, virtual keyboard at the bottom of the screen. It's uh, free software that I tried out. I'm trying out from um, Gospel. What is it called? Gospel players, something like that. I, I've, I'll get the name of the software in a little bit. Oh, it's called Mediculous Player. So hopefully that's helpful to any of you who are watching. That way, you know, my hands are not in the way of the keys. You can see uh, whatever I'm playing. And you can see the note on top. So before you start playing, um, hopefully you can hear all this. I want us to warm up our hands. You know, it's, uh, it's already that time of year where you start getting that bone chilling temperature. And well, maybe it depends on where you are in the world, I guess. But if you're where I am, it's starting to get cold. So massage your hands, get some heat in there. Tighten your fists, flick your hands out, shake them, tighten your fists again, flick them, and then shake them. You want to make sure you're nice and loose for when you play. All right, uh, so the last lessons we covered most of the, of the white major keys like C, F, G, D major, or sorry, A major, D major, and E major with their inversions. We did some exercises, but we left one out. Uh, I left one out. It's sort of the odd chord out. It, it sounds like, it doesn't sound any different. It's just the, the fingering is not like any other. And that's B major. So we're going to learn that today. So uh, if you find middle C on your piano, and you go one to the left, you're going to find B. So B is made up of... B, D sharp, and F sharp. F sharp is the first in the group of three black keys. Now, you'll notice that I'm using fingers one, two, and four. Sometimes I use fingers one, two, and three. Sometimes I use fingers one, three, and five. It, it's all depending on the context. For example, if I'm playing uh, a song that requires the, the notes in between. I'm going to have my hand in uh, in this regular position, the one three five. However, if I'm planning on moving up to E major from B in root position, I'll want to use finger one, two, and three. So E major in second inversion. That's B on the bottom, an E with the second finger, and fourth finger going to that G sharp. With the left hand, you could use a five, finger five on B, finger two on D sharp, finger one on F sharp. Now, what about what about inversions? So we're gonna, we're gonna put our first finger in the right hand on D sharp, second finger on F sharp. This is not really different from the uh, the way we play the other major chords. And then our fifth finger on B. So this might feel a little more familiar. And then this one is uh, this one is different from the rest of them too second inversion with an F sharp on the bottom, second finger on B, 
and third finger on D. So let's do that again. Root position, B major. These last two are going to stay when we go to our first inversion. Hello, thank you for joining me. I don't know if your name is pronounced Ken, but I see you. And then second inversion. One, two, five, one, two, five. One, two, three, one, or one, two, four. Depends on what you're going to do next. Left hand. Five, two, one. This one I sometimes do four, two, one. Sometimes five, three, one. It all depends. It doesn't have to be one way. And then that's uh, first inversion. Then second inversion. Five, two, one. So I just, I realized I made a mistake in the title of this video. It said B major, C minor, D minor, and A minor. Uh, that C minor should not be there. What I actually meant to say was D minor, E minor, and A minor. Um, now, many of you know this already, but if, you, uh, if you're brand new to music, you don't know the difference between a minor and a major chord. Uh, the difference sound-wise is uh, a major chord has a what a lot of people would agree is a happy quality to the sound. It's a very open. While a minor chord would have a um, a sad quality. D minor, the saddest of all chords, allegedly. So this is D minor. If you notice, D minor is all white, just like C major in root position. D minor, all you have would have to do is move over to the right and play one, three, and five. D, F, and A, as you can see on the little uh, on the little keyboard at the bottom of the screen. So D minor. Now to get to E minor, it's very easy. You're just going to move your fingers to the right. E, G, B. Let's play D minor four times and E minor four times. Ready? One, two, three, go. E minor. The last one is A minor. So A minor starts on A because that's the name of the chord. And then we're going to play C and E. Now if you noticed D, E, and A minor, they, they're all white keys. And you have that same configuration of 1, 3, and 5. A minor spells ace, by the way. So let's go from A to D. Sorry, A minor to D minor to E minor in root position, um, playing it four times each note, and then ending on A minor. Ready? Go. One, two, D minor, E minor, and A minor. Good. On the left hand, we're going to play A minor as one, three, one three five or five three one sorry d minor is the same way five three one e minor is five three one as well so we'll play a minor uh, d minor e minor and then back to a ready and go one two three four one two three four one two three and a minor 
Now, you'll start seeing a pattern develop as I start showing you like the, the inversions of these chords. Um, C major, we had one, three, five, one, two, five, one, three, five, or one, two, four. It's going to be the same thing with the minor notes because they're all white, or the, the A minor, D minor, and E minor. One, three, five, that's in root position, A, C, E. Remember that first inversion means that the root of the chord goes, or um, I'm sorry, the third of the chord is going to be at the bottom. So C, E, and A. It's going to be one, two, five. You've already had this hand shape before. And then second inversion is E, A, C. You can do one, three, five, or one, two, four. I would learn both and get used to them because depending on where you're going after that, you, you're going to use, you might use different fingers, fingerings. So for the left hand, A minor, root position, it's 5, 3, 1. So first inversion is uh, 5, 3, 1. Second inversion is 5, 2, 1. Now, if you try to do 5, 3, 1, you can do it. It might feel a little weird, a little tight in the middle. You don't want that tension. 5, 2, 1. That same configuration, that same fingering can be applied to those uh, to the other chords. So I don't want to go through all of them right now. I don't want to uh, have you practice them right now. So, so far we've learned, uh, let's go through all the chords. We've learned A major in root position, B major, which is B, D sharp, F sharp. Now, you'll notice that the, um, the little app I have, Medicalous Player, at the bottom of the screen is showing B, E flat, and F sharp. This is the incorrect way to write spell that out. A B major chord is spelled out B, D sharp, F sharp. Now why why does it say E flat? Well, because D sharp and F flat are different spellings of the same note. They're called enharmonics. Um I might I might talk about that in the future, but just trust me that it's spelled B, D sharp, F sharp. So we know that chord. Then let's play a C major. All white. D major. D major has that black note in the middle. D, F sharp, A. Then let's move our fingers one note to the right for an E major. Now this is also spelled incorrectly. That's uh, an E major is E, F sharp. I'm sorry. E, G sharp, and B. Again, A flat and G sharp are different spellings of the same pitch. And then F major is all white. G major is all white. And then we go back to A major. Then the minor keys that we've learned are D minor, that's DFA, E minor, that's EGB, and A minor. Great. So uh, let's do a little exercise combining major and minor chords because that's when, when it starts getting interesting. Instead of doing major chords all the time, we can start adding minor chords and changing the emotion of the piece. So let's start by playing a C major. We're going to play that four times. And then move our, our hands one note to the right. I should say, I, um, let me correct myself. Um, it is a whole step to the right. And what, I'm, what do I mean by whole step? Well, from C to C, this octave is what it's called. We measure the distance between our, um, 
we go up by half steps. We go up by note by half steps. So C to C sharp would be a half step. C sharp to D, half step, half step, half step, half, 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 half and half. Now, what do you get when you two put two halves together? You get a whole. So two half steps equals a whole step. Therefore, C to D is a whole step. D, D to E is also a whole step. However, look at this. E to F, is that a whole step or a half step? Now, this might be tricky because we were comparing C to D, which are right next to each other right here. However, there's a note in between them. But there is no note between E and F. That means that E and F are half step away from each other. And you can uh, memorize the sound of a half step. If you know about the movie Jaws, da 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 you know, the famous, the famous shark music, that is a half step. And a whole step sounds a little further apart than a half step does. So half step. Now, um, what is the difference between, or what makes something a major and something a minor? Why is a D minor all white keys and a minor while C major is all white keys and a major? That's because of the distance between each of the notes. For example, the distance between the first two notes in C major is called a major third because we have something called intervals. Intervals is the distance between two notes. So the first two notes are one, two, three, four half steps away from each other. The distance between the second and the third note are one, two, three half steps away from each other. So the first two notes are four half steps. The last two notes are three half steps. So remember that formula. In a D minor or any minor chord for that, uh, for that matter, the, f the distance between the first two notes is different. One, two, three, three half steps. And the distance between the S the last two notes is one, two, three, four. So if you notice, the distance has been flipped around. However, if I increase the distance between the first two notes, one half step, it turns into a major chord. So a major chord, turning a major chord into a minor chord requires moving that the third of that chord one half step down. Now, do you notice that it has that sad quality to it? And that one is neither major nor minor. We'll get to that later. It's that pesky B, I tell you. B is like the, uh, the red-headed stepchild. Um, you know what? I take that back. I'm sorry if I offended anybody who's a red-headed stepchild. Anyway. I'll pretend I didn't say that. Now, um, the t one of the uh, things I was going to cover in the video is interv intervals. And I mentioned that briefly. I didn't really explain what it was. Um, interval is the distance between two notes. It's kind of weird the way that it's measured, but it, it makes sense in certain contexts. So... If I start on C and I play a D, the distance between those two notes is called a second, as in the number two, a second. Now I haven't talked about the quality of this of the the second. Um, what do I mean by that? If I play a half step above that, that's also a second, but it's a different type of second. That's called a minor second. So C to C sharp is a minor second. C to D is a major second. C to E flat is called a minor third. That's how we get our minor chords. Minor third. C to E 
is called a major third. C to F is called a perfect fourth. C to F sharp is called an augmented fourth or diminished fifth or more commonly known as a tritone. C to G is a fifth because in the scale degree, C would be one, two, three, four, five, and G would be five. So one and five. C to A flat would be an augmented fifth or a minor sixth. Minor sixth sounds sound very beautiful. Major six is A to A, sorry, C to A. C to B flat is a minor seven. C to B natural is a major seven. And then C to C is an octave. Now, why is it called an octave? Because oct means eight. C is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The interval is an eighth or an octave. So the distance between those two notes is an octave. The same applies if you're going backwards. That's uh, minor second, minor third, perfect fourth, perfect fifth, minor six, minor seven, and an octave. So let's review what we've learned. We've learned, uh, well in the past videos, we've learned all the major chords that start on the white notes, otherwise known as the natural keys. Natural keys are all the white keys. Starting on C. Why do we start on C? Um, because C is the easiest key to play in, and most of our songs um, are built using the the scale or the mode called the Ionian mode. Most of our songs are built on that on the notes that fall within this scale, the C major scale. Think of almost any song on the radio and it's most likely going to be in the Ionian scale. I lost my train of thought a little bit. Oh yeah, uh, so we'll start on C. And we learn D major. E major, F major, G major, A major, B major, then we learn D minor, E minor, and A minor. So I encourage you to practice playing these notes, these chords. Over and over, um, get faster at changing between them. Practice the the uh, the inversions. Hey friends, if you enjoyed this, um, I have, and you want to support this channel financially, I have a Venmo and PayPal link in the description. Um, just. Throw me a tip, anything, uh, I, I would greatly appreciate it. I want to keep doing these videos and I want to keep paying the rent in this in this studio um, to help you out. I want you to learn how to pian play piano. I want you to love it and to get better and better so that you can play any song that you want. Um, thank you for joining me today and I'll see you next week at the same time.